Hello everyone, this is The Final Boss, and on today's episode, I'm feeling thankful. Welcome to the show, I am Kyle Bossman, and today is the day before Thanksgiving, if you're watching this on Wednesday. Uh, Thanksgiving is, of course, a, a holiday we celebrate in the United States. Uh, started as this thing where Native Americans and pilgrims uh, joined together and shared each other's food with each other, had a big feast so that they could endure Black Friday. But that multicultural uh, ideal is sort of evaporated from the holiday. Now it's just kind of, let's have turkey. But I sort of appreciate this idea of a holiday about being thankful, which is something I think a lot of us could be more often. And so today's list, here are my things that I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving. The first thing I'm thankful for is that the next gen launches happened. They were successful, people bought consoles, and that people seem happy and nothing exploded. So, there's a good thing. Uh, also thankful for the Nintendo 3DS this year. Just having a freaking fantastic year, the 3DS. Uh, also very encouraging. It makes me think maybe the Wii U can have the same thing one year. Uh, when the 3DS launched, it was too expensive. It had no games. And its primary feature was a gimmick. And now all those things have kind of evaporated. You know, Nintendo has uh, diminished the perceived importance of 3D and, and everything else. And so now the 3DS is just a little powerhouse. It gives me hope that maybe the Wii U can do those exact same things and that someday I'll be talking, oh, the Wii U's year has been amazing. Look at all these Wii U games. Until then, not so much, but I am incredibly thankful for the 3DS this year. Also, I I'm thankful for games that don't have exclusive content this Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, just the kind of game where it's fine if everyone on every single platform plays the same game. I just, oh, I hate that phrase. It's thrown around so much right now, I guess, because next gen. But exclusive content to me, it, it, it's value based on a thing that you have that someone else doesn't have. I think that's why human brains are reacting to it. Because if a commercial just said, oh, and there's extra stuff in the game, you'd be like, oh, extra stuff, who cares? But instead it's, hey, here's some extra stuff that other people can't have. Because, oh. It's, you don't even know what that content is. Like, who are you who just hears exclusive content? That sounds good to me. I'll take that. That guy can't have my exclusive content. Thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Today is a thankful day. Okay. Um, I guess I, I'm thankful for the internet. I've had this job for less than a year now, but it's been a strange year for me because I've, I've never felt so uh, connected to the human beings of planet Earth in a weird way. Uh, for example, last Friday, uh, Michael Damiani, Ben Moore, and myself, we did a live stream of two Nintendo games. We did Mario 3D World and Zelda Link Between Worlds. Uh, this all happened after the whole Xbox One show. It was less of us like putting on a show for everyone and more like there was a, a couch with 2,000 seats and we were all, all like, like sitting down and watching Damiani play Zelda and like making jokes about it. Uh, it, was, it was really strange. It was like, it was like having 2,000 friends over, really bizarre. Uh, and, and, and it's weird to me because I always like prejudge Twitch. I'm like, well, why don't I play my own games? Why would I watch someone else play games? If you're not watching a game being played, you're watching a human being playing a game and then yeah, interacting with that person. I'm thankful that Beast Wars is on Netflix. I'm thankful for launch montages that don't have the phrase exclusively coming first to this platform. Uh, I guess I should explain this one a little bit. Last Thursday night, on the Xbox One launch special that was on Spike and streaming live on GameTrailers.com. There was this montage at near the end of it, like a hype montage. Get all excited about the Xbox One games that are coming. So like when Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes came up, exclusive content only on the Xbox platform. It's like, hold on a second, hold on a second, rewind. Rewind two weeks ago, Hideo Kojima was just like, hey everybody, uh, we're gonna blow your mind with an announcement at the PlayStation event. So then Sony had this uh, uh, announcement, he came out and announced it, and he said, oh, uh, there's exclusive content on the PlayStation platforms. And then he showed a trailer, and the big announcement was, hey, you remember that really cool part of Metal Gear Solid 4? Well, we're doing that again. Is your mind blown? No. <laughs> No, no, it's not. That is not mind blowing. It, and then, okay, so a week later, and this dumb Xbox montage where we learn that all these things are exclusively launching first on Xbox. Exclusive content for Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. This game has exclusive content on two different platforms. And then later on in the same montage, 
Let's get hyped, everybody, because we spent a lot of money to make sure Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare doesn't come to PCs or PS4 anytime soon. Do you love it? There's a couple kinds of exclusives. There's exclusives that are, are designed for a particular platform and take advantage of that platform. That's like your Halo or your Mario or your Gran Turismo. And I guess also there, there are, are console exclusives that are, are third parties, but they're helping them fund it. Like, like Bayonetta 2 wouldn't have happened if not for Nintendo and, and, and like Sony, I guess, funding some indies a little bit, helping them get their games made. Then there's this kind of exclusive that is just we're spending money so that you keep things away from other platforms. And that drives me crazy. Did EA need that money to make that game? Or is this some jiggery pokery? Because the publishers are like, ah, oh, well, this is the state of the modern games industry. You know, we're just, uh, you need this kind of revenue stream. We, we don't want microtransactions. We just have to put them in. And so if Microsoft and Sony are, are willing to throw us some money, we'll take it. You know, this is, that's like fine. Okay, stop justifying it. It's okay, but I'm not gonna act like you're doing us a favor because you're not. I'm not gonna be grateful for that. Be thankful, Kyle. This is Thanksgiving episode. Ugh. Uh, thankful, thankful, thankful. I'm thankful that I have food to eat. I'm thankful that Super Mario 3D World is so good. In fact, if there's one thing I don't like about Super Mario 3D World is that it's too good. It is though. What I mean by that is, is like it's, it's, it's like it's never gonna learn its lesson. <laughs> On this show in the past, I've made fun of the game uh, because it didn't aspire to be what Super Mario 64 was or anything close to it. Uh, and now we learn that it's not going to be that game and it's fantastic without it. It's like, it's like you are a teacher and Nintendo is a troubled teen. And you, you come to her after class and you say, Serena, you really need to just apply yourself. If you could just, if you could just focus and try, I know that something good can come out of your mind. You have so much potential. And Serena's just like, I don't care. School's for losers. Goodbye. And then the day of finals is coming and, and, and you're positive that Serena is going to fail this exam, but you know what? You kind of think maybe it'll be a good thing if Serena fails this, you know? Maybe it'll be a, an eye opener. And so Serena walks in all cool, leans back, takes a test, and then hands it to you. And you take off your glasses and you're like, Serena, these are, these are the best scores I've seen from any of my students. Listen, if, if, if you could just set aside one day a week and focus, and Serena's like, nope, sorry, mm -mm. I'm gonna make Wii U Party, this game that comes with a ridiculous stand for my already ridiculous controller. Bye. I'll never change. And lastly, I'm thankful for Metal Gear Solid, the old PlayStation 1 game. Look at this, you can still play this today. You know what the best part is? No downloadable missions, no microtransactions, no exclusive content, just a game. Just a whole game on two discs, a whole story from start to end. How did we ever do that? How did we make money back then? How did anyone profit when the whole game was on two discs? This is, this isn't right. This must be, no, that was, must have been a hole. Because this isn't how we do business around here. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's the episode for this week. Clearly, I got a, I got a real thorn in my side this week. I got a, a stick up my butt. Hey, uh, thanks for all the, the comments last week. The, the, uh, everyone else did some power rankings and there were some really fun things that popped up. So I guess if, if you want to list off what you're thankful for this week, uh, do that because you know I'll read them. If you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. And hey, have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, if you're not in the U.S. or you just don't like holidays, uh, I hope that you're able to find some excuse to be thankful for one day because it's it is fun when you're able to be genuinely thankful. I'm thankful for you, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> I'll be back here next Wednesday. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Hey, Damiani. What? Oh, I was just, um, I've been trying to be like thankful today because it's Thanksgiving and everything. Uh, I just want to say I am thankful that you are my coworker. Yeah, man, I am too. Cool. All right. Hey, uh, have a great weekend. 
Yeah, you too, Kyle. Actually, you know what? Me and a bunch of the guys are going to go to Applebee's tonight to make fun of some stray cats in the parking lot. Uh, you can come if you want. Uh, sorry, I can't. I got a date tonight. All right. Who if? Uh, just some girl I met at the deli. Oh. Uh, cool. Have a good date, man. It's just she got like, she got like cute freckles. She got like lime green fingernails, Damiani. She like, she like make jokes about how animals would talk if they could talk. Actually, yeah. Do you know her? Nope. You make me silent when I look for sound. It's like holding your breath. You're hopeless and bound I think I'm in love <laughs>